beloved, you are listening to Grace Life Comey Podcast, a platform commissioned by God to raise men into completeness in Christ Jesus. We believe that you will be blessed beyond measure as you give yourself wholly to this divinely inspired teaching. Through God's servant Pastor Chimdi Ohahuna. Grace to you, Jesus is Lord. Father, we bless and appreciate you. Yes, Lord. We give you praise and glory. We give you honor and thanksgiving. We say, Hallowed be your name forever. Yes, Jesus, we celebrate you. Holy Spirit, we magnify you. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for your faithfulness and loving kindness. We say, Be glorified forever in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, it's another time in your presence. Thank you for how you helped us the first meeting, the second meeting. This is the third meeting. We bless you because we know you are sure to do us good. In the name of Jesus, we ask that you teach us with Holy Spirit. Grant us understanding that we may live. Grant us revelation. Grant us insight into your word. To your glory and praise. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. amen. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to celebrate God for what he began on the first day of commanding the year 2024. It was awesome. Um, we thank God for the great life we received. Uh, this commanding the year um, has been wonderful. The past previous commanding the years and um, but I'm enjoying this one because it's bringing something beautiful on the table for us. Amen to Jesus. Amen. And I'm coming up with the fact that it was um, visited by Go Forward that was exclusive. Amen to Jesus. We give God thanks and praise forever. We celebrate the, the Lord for all he has done. Amen to Jesus. Glory to God forevermore. Hallelujah, Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. All right, I um, want to appreciate all our listeners from all over the nations of the earth. The good Lord bless you. Um, thank you for what you do. Thank you for investing into your spiritual life. Thank you for uh, uh, all the likes and all the shares. Thank you for sharing the word of God. Everyone who has been a major evangelist, the good Lord bless you greatly. Amen to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus forevermore. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen and amen. amen. Glory to God forevermore. Hallelujah. Um, today we are uh, this meeting we are going to be uh, taking off from where we stopped. Uh, we on the with this um, conference has been tagged "Speak for Goodness." Amen to Jesus. Amen. Speak for Goodness, and um, we began to understand in the first meeting what um, the Father did in creation. Um, I will discover that um, the Father spoke good. He described creation as good um, seven times. Amen to Jesus. He described creation as good seven times. And the seventh time happened to be um, very good. Amen to Jesus. And the very good was the sum up of creation. The sum of creation was very good. Amen to Jesus. And um, we understood that despite the fact that Adam sinned, God did not change the description of creation. Amen to Jesus. We also understood that God never named anything he created. Amen to Jesus. They had, they were all um, given a nomenclature. Amen to Jesus. Uh, but he gave the job of naming to Adam. But one thing he did was that he described everything he created. Genesis chapter 1 verse 4, he described light as good. Everything created, he described everything he created. Amen to Jesus. He described everything he created. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory to God forevermore. Amen and amen. And so, um, he, by describing everything he created as good, he gave a precedence to Adam for Adam to follow. Praise God. But um, the, at the end of the day, Adam never followed that precedence. Praise God forevermore. He never followed the precedence. And um, I would um, say that it affected him a great deal. Praise God forevermore. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. And so, um, that precedence was not just only for Adam to follow, but that precedence was for all of humanity to follow. We discovered in the first teaching that we are to consistently, intentionally name everything good, everything that we create. We understood that Adam created uh, with his body, and then he also created with his mind when God told Adam to name all the animals. Amen to Jesus. To name every animal he created. And so, Adam created with his mind and created with his body. And after naming them, he was actually meant to also describe them as what? Good. The same way the Father did. But Adam lived and he never described. Amen to Jesus. Um, that, that gives reasons for when um, the, the Lord asked him, um, um, uh, 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 Adam, where are thou? And um, have you eaten the, of the food I said should not eat? And he said, the Woman, you gave to me. Because he actually named the woman, Amen to Jesus, but he didn't describe. But we see the operations of the Father. Despite sin, despite the sin of Adam, the Father never undescribed creation as good. He called it good, and good it remained. Amen to Jesus. And good is still remains. Amen to Jesus. All right. And that was something we had to learn. And we discovered that the Father did that because of his love. And um, we understood God commanded his love to us as a man. We yet seen as Christ dies for us. The love of the Father has been the reason. His unfailing love, his loving kindness is the reason for everything he does. Amen to Jesus. And so God does not uh, God never allowed sin to make him change his description of creation. Um the same approach we must have towards um, everything that God has put in our care and everything that God has helped us and enabled us to create. Be it your family, be it your business, be it your job, whatever God has put in your care and whatever God has enabled you to create, you must maintain the same description of good. The devil brought sin to detract, but sin could not detract. So many things are going to try to detract us. The economy, um, society, influence and many things the list goes on they are going to try to make us change our description of good amen, amen. but we have a responsibility to maintain that description praise god forevermore that's why this year's um uh, uh, uh compiling here is speak forth goodness god intentionally kept speaking goodness six times and then call it all very good intentionally intentionally so we have and we have to intentionally speak for what goodness it's not going to fall on our lap goodness is not going to come by osmosis are you getting what i'm saying it's not going to come by um, um prophetic declaration over our life goodness is going to be a responsibility we have to what we have to take amen to jesus amen. it's going to be a responsibility we have to take Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah, Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. A responsibility we have to want. We have to take. Amen. Amen. All right. And we began in the last meeting look, studying goodness. What goodness meant. Amen to Jesus. Amen. And in that meeting, we were able to look at one of the words that describes goodness. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Glory to God forevermore. Hallelujah. And um. Um, we discovered that goodness is from the Hebrew word, the Hebrew word to, to, to. It's from the Hebrew word to. Amen. Amen. It's from the Hebrew word to. And um, to basically uh, means quite a number of things. Amen to Jesus. It means a number of things. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. To means a number of things. And um, we, we looked at one of the meanings of to in our previous um, study and um, we are going to be looking at more meanings of two this uh, meeting amen to jesus amen. hallelujah and uh, one of the meanings of two we are going to be looking at in this meeting is um, agreeable to the highest nature with god um, so when god said what he created was good it meant that it was agreeable to the highest nature with him Amen to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Now, so having understood that creation was pleasant to the highest nature, that's another way it was most pleasant to God, this was why he called it good. Now, everything that God did, it was because of, um, God always does things for a reason. Amen to Jesus. Amen. God never just does things for doing sake. 
Praise God forevermore. Revelation 4 verse 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. For thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure. And for thy pleasure. They are and were created. Now, so if it was not created for his pleasure, he wouldn't create them. Now, so everything God does, he does it for a reason and he does it for a world, for a purpose and for thy pleasure. And so what he created, he made, he created everything because he wanted to have pleasure. Amen to Jesus. And we discovered in our previous study that actually what God created on the earth even gave him more pleasure than all he had created in heaven. Amen to Jesus. And that's why he called it good. Now, when God created the cherubim, the seraphims, um, the angels, you know, even Lucifer himself, when he created every of the, of every of the beings he created in heaven, amen to Jesus, whenever, whenever it was ne never recorded in scripture that he said it was good. When he created the heavens, which basically in the context there in Genesis chapter 1, the heavens there actually um, is the firmament, are we together? The clouds, when he created the heavens and the earth, he called it what? Good. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Because they were they, 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 they suited the purpose for which he created. Why? He created them because he wanted pleasure. Are we together? Yes. So God created for reasons. Everything God does is for a reason. Amen to Jesus. And that's why God is purposeful and purpose-driven. Purpose is the reason why a thing is created. Amen to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus forevermore. And so, God created and called it good because it fulfilled the purpose for which he was created it. So that means creation fulfilled purpose. And creation is fulfilling what? Purpose. Now, whenever you see the devil come into the picture, he comes into the picture when purpose is at work. When purpose is not at work, you never see the devil. No, you never see the devil. When, you see, when a life is not fulfilling purpose, the devil has no business there. Are you getting what I'm saying? When the devil is on the rampage, when he's on the attack, when he's going all wild, when he's going all mad, the reason for that is because purpose is at work. That's all. Now, from Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, when God created Adam, to Genesis chapter 3, chapter, chapter um, 2, the last verse of chapter 2, Adam was fulfilling purpose. That's why the devil ran all mad and came in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Are you get what I'm saying? Genesis chapter 2, the Lord brought the animals to Adam to name, and whatever I called them, that was their name. Same Genesis chapter 2, God saw that it was not good for man to be alone, and he was, he caused a deep sleep to fall on him, and from he took a rib from him, and he created a woman, and man woke up and said, this is indeed flesh of my flesh, and bone of my bone, she shall be called God woman. Purpose was at work, purpose was at work, and so long as purpose was going steady, purpose was going consistent, what happened? The devil was getting angry. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, so when God calls something good, he calls it good because that thing is fulfilling purpose. Are we together? And when the devil is on the attack, he is on the attack because that thing or that being is fulfilling what? Purpose. Now, so um, uh, I remember when um, um, the teaching on purpose became viral, amen to Jesus, and we bless God for, um, uh, uh, for uh, Dr. Miles Moreau of the Blessed Memory. If not for him, we would have not understood the teaching of purpose, amen to Jesus. When he became viral, everybody began to, you know, try to discover their purpose. God, the basics behind purpose was discover your purpose. Everybody began to find out what their purpose was. Now, one easy way to know your purpose is, is the devil on the attack of my life? Anything I am doing that the devil gets mad about, that he keeps attacking me because of, just know that that is your word, your purpose. It's as easy as that. Oh, I have been preaching for years. I have been teaching the word of God for years. I have been preaching for years. And I know that that's one area the devil gets mad. Whenever I teach, whenever I preach, the devil gets mad. I just seem come, all hell gets loose. And so I, I, I decided to keep preaching, whether the devil likes it or yes. As one of the pastors they used to say, either the devil, you a Yoruba pastor, either the devil likes it or yes. So either the devil likes it or yes, I keep on preaching. Because I understood that that is purpose. I remember once the Lord told me, some years back, he told me, your prosperity is in your purpose. The Lord told me that your prosperity is in your purpose. And so how do you know your purpose? Easy. That thing that when you do it, the devil gets angry and he starts attacking you. He attacks your family. He attacks your business. He attacks your job. He attacks your career. He attacks everything that you can put that, that comes from you and that, that, that you created and that it has to do with you. He attacks it. Whenever I see the devil starts attacking where you do something, you know that that is your purpose. Stick to it. Hold on to it. 
When the devil attacked and so, um, somebody drove everybody away from church, uh, they thought that we are, they, have ended, they have stopped preaching. I told them, uh, if you all of you leave church, I will keep preaching. No, you don't understand how you are living. This is a madman. They didn't understand. I remember when in um, days back 2010, thereabouts, we wanted to get a, a hall for church then. And then um, I told the young boys who were with me, the young chaps who were with me, they were actually living in my house. I was mentoring them, you know, and I told them, let's get a hall for church. And we we're striving to get a hall for church. A hall was not forthcoming. And the next thing the Lord told me was, go and buy land. Not just a land, a big land. Ah, I called the young boy, and I'm telling you, this is me that I'm living in a box room. I could barely pay my rent. And in fact, survival was, was let me say, <laughs> almost impossible. And I called them and said, the Lord said we should get a land. Ah, we have not got you all to rent. You are saying we should get land. And before you know, all the young men started leaving church. One, two, three, four. They left church and they left me. As God will have in that period, we are still using a secondary school hall facility. Amen to Jesus. And so, all of them left me in church. They left me. And I will go to that whole facility and arrange the chairs there on Sunday morning. I will preach to empty chairs. I was preaching to empty chairs for like three months. I was just starting ministry. That is the time where you need people around you. So sometimes people wonder why I can, um, um, I've been able to stay consistent. Um, a man of God told me, was like, man, um, I, he wanted to tell me there's an inspiration to me, that the way I've been able to stay consistent on the podcast ministry, for these years without physical audience, in fact, I'm an inspiration. And I gave him a scripture that the Lord gave me. The Lord told me 2010, be instant in season and out of sin, do the work of an evangelist. The Lord told me, preach whether I see result or not. But before the Lord gave me that word, the Lord had already trained me a little. So when they all left me in church, what happened? I was preaching to empty chairs for months. Empty chairs. A young minister who just started. Nobody to encourage me. I was in Benin City. My wife was in Port Harcourt. And everybody had left me. And I was alone. The people that I was supposed to even encourage me, funny enough, these boys, I was the one feeding them. Are you getting what I'm saying? I was the one taking care of them. And they left me because I said, God said I should buy land. And they are looking for. In fact, one of them told me, said, Pastor, when you told us to look for for hall, all of us, our blood was hot, we were ginger. He said, but the moment you change from hall to land, ah, you kill our spirit, pastor. You kill our spirit. <laughs> and they all left me. And what will I do when the Lord says, I, I should buy land? Will I obey the people that want their spirit to be high? Or obey God? Peter told, Peter and Paul told them, he said, but when they told them not to preach in the name of Jesus, and they said, ah, they asked the uh, Pharisee, they said, we will rather obey you obey God who sent us. And they said, we'd rather obey the Lord who sent us. Praise God forevermore. So I chose to obey God and they left me in church. All of them. You see, when church people want to do you, they will do you without looking back. That's the painful thing about church and church folks. They left me, a young minister, still trying to get my foot in. And I was preaching to empty chairs for three, for months. Empty chairs. I remember when I'm going to church, I would drive my car. When I'm going to church on Sunday, I'm not happy. Any day Sunday is coming, my heart is beating. Are we coming to Sunday? Was one of the worst days of my life. Are we coming to church on Sunday again? Am I coming to preach to your teacher? Because I knew even with the evangelist, evangelist, you know that you're not expecting anybody. So you are coming to preach to empty chairs, empty chairs, no encouragement of any kind. But I maintained preaching to the empty chairs for months. At the end of the day, we finally bought the land. When I bought the land, I sent text messages to all of them, inviting them for Thanksgiving service that we have finally bought. The land. <laughs> And when I sent text messages, one of them came for the Thanksgiving service. And that was how we picked up with that one again and continued where we stopped. So when I was in um, Accra and they were doing all drama, I told them, say, see, so you guys should forget this thing. I have preached to empty chair again. At least my own life is even better. I have my wife and kids here with me. Me, I have preached to empty chair. So if all of you leave the church, I don't have a problem. I will keep preaching. And they thought I was joking. So when they one drove, one of them drove all of them away for church, I said, oh, all well and good. That's what I say, I have wife, I have wife and children. At that time, my wife was in another location. I preached them again. Now it's not empty chairs. I'm preaching to my family. And I preached successfully to my family. And that was how the podcast ministry came into be. Are you getting what I'm saying? So the devil has fought preaching. I remember I used to tell the young boys I was training then, I used to tell them, I said, come, let me tell you something. The reason why I can never stop preaching is that Jesus told them when they were praising, when told the, um, the, 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 the old man, when the children were praising him and were stopping the children from praising him. He said, if you what, if you stop these children from praising me, I will raise stones to praise me. And I said, you know what a stone is? I said, a stone is an inanimate object. And inanimate objects cannot what? Sing like you do. 
I said, well, what, what you said, I'll raise stones to praise you, praise me. It means that I'll raise somebody that has never done what you were doing before. And somehow, he will just do it better than you. And I said, that's why I remember, I will continue preaching. You know? Many of them, they've, 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 been, they've gone, they've talked, they, some of them, they, they come, they say, I know, they run away. But they've noticed that I've been consistent. Why? Because I don't want a stone to do this work for me. Now, people can preach what they are preaching. You get what I'm saying? People can do their work of the ministry. People can keep doing the one that God has called them to do. But this one that God has called me to do, no, I don't want stone to do it for me. This grace upon my life, I don't want stone to take it. I have to use it. And I must what? I use it well. Uh, um, a, a, a man of God saw me on Saturday and he told me, ah, the grace of God upon your life here. Eh? Hmm. The grace of God upon your life. He said, I listened to your teaching just um, in the course of um, the um, Go Forward um, conference, one of the teachings there. He said, I've been listening to messages. I've been listening to messages. He said, but that message of faith, I've listened to it. He said, man, he said, man of God, I've never seen that. I said, the grace of God upon your life. He said, brace up, you are going places. Ah, if I'm beginning to hear this one, then is it now now I will stop preaching? No, we'll keep preaching. Because he has told me the grace of God upon your life. That means there are some stones hanging around there waiting for me to drop this grace so that he will not carry the grace and start using it. No, I will not allow any stone to do that. When my, my daughter has already asked me, Daddy, how do you prepare messages? Daddy, do you memorize all the scriptures? Daddy, uh, she's not trying to learn me- how to prepare teachings from me. When I prepared for this conference, I said, Daddy, see, um, go forward. Did you not prepare to the flow of the Spirit? And it was very wonderful. Daddy, this one you are sitting down to type now. See, just flow with the Spirit again. I said, don't worry, let me type this time around. Now that my children are already learning the thing, you don't want me to stop. Ah, sorry, it's not a certain work. So when you see the devil, when you see the devil hitting, hitting you whenever you do something, know that that is purpose. Yes. I get what I'm saying. The devil came all out on creation. Why? Because he knew that God said creation was what? Good. Anything that God has called good and you have also supported God and said it is good, watch how the devil comes out against it. And that thing means that that, that is purpose. So hold on to it. So there are many stories I could give on. Are you get what I'm saying? But I have stayed on preaching and teaching the word of God. Why? Because I know that this is where the devil is after. Are you getting me? That's where the devil is after. So we stayed on it. And as we come into this new year, as we end as, as 2024, the devil is going to be after everything that will create purpose in your life. Every purpose driven the devil will be after it. Now, the Lord called me to raise many to complete leaders in Christ. My major calling is teach and preach the gospel. Disciple people with the word of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, there are every other aspects are there. The healings are there. The miracles are there. We thank God for every of that. But man, I don't focus on those ones like I focus on the word. Because I've known over the years that what has made people grow around me is the word. Are you getting what I'm saying? And the devil is fighting that word business like no man's business. So, I stay on it. Praise God. Everything that is good, as described by God, attracts the attention of the devil. Are we together? And so this is what precedes it to wake up. So what is that the devil is hitting that area, hitting another area? Ah, just know that there's something good you are doing. <laughs> there's something purposeful you are doing. So what do you do? What is that thing purposeful that I'm doing that is calling the attention of the devil like this? Ah, once you discover it, intensify your efforts in it. Keep doing it. I preached 14 days in a row. The last time I did that was in Congo. <laughs> Amen to Jesus. 14 days in a row, man, my body has heard the preaching. But man, I'm still preaching again. We're still running till 31st. And then 1st of January, we're entering again. Not because we are, our bodies enjoying the, the work, are you getting what I'm saying? But we know that necessity is laid on us. Why? Because this is purpose. Yes. Once purpose is at work, it attracts the what? The attention of the devil. And when the devil is attracted, man, you are doing something good. No, 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 no. You are doing something good. Keep up the good work. So, well, someone tell me, we want to hear keep up the good work. We are looking for people to say keep up the good work when we are not even doing something good. Now, when you are, when you, how do you know you are doing something good? And how would I say keep up the good work? When the devil is what? Attracted. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 2, the devil was seriously attracted. And so, what happened? In Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, he couldn't hold his attraction again. He showed up. But by right, what Adam and Eve should have understood is that men, they are doing a good work. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when the devil came with the temptation, he would have said, wow, 
Satan, this shows that we have been doing a good work. Are we together? Yes. Praise God forevermore. So now, good, one of the meanings of the word, uh, meaning for, for the word to, the Hebrew word for good is what? Agreeable to the highest nature with God. <laughs> so that means um, creation was what? Agreeable to the highest nature with God. The height of agreement with God was creation. See, we don't understand how special creation was to God. That's why he had to do everything to redeem creation. We saw, we, in, our, in our last study, we discovered John, um, John 3 saying, For God so loved the world. He didn't say, For God so loved humanity. I cannot say. He so loved what? the world, which is a sum up of creation, that he gave his only begotten son. Why? Because this creation he created was what? Agreeable with him to the highest nature. Agreeable with him. He was so, uh, like um, a, a slang we say, they jailed. You know what I'm saying? They jailed. He was agreeable with God. Are you getting me? And the devil knew this. And that was what the whole drama of Genesis chapter 3 was because the devil knew all of this. I, I, are you getting what I'm saying? And God did not see change the, the, what, his description about nature. That was why he sent Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying? To bring about what? Redemption. Because creation was, is, and will forever be what? Agreeable to the highest nature with God. Now, having understood that creation was pleasant to the highest nature, as most pleasant to, to God, this is why he called it good. Creation was also agreeable to God, thus it is good as described by God. So when God said it is good, he knew what he was saying. Who else can describe it but the one who created it? Are you getting what I'm saying? No one else can describe it but the one who created it. You see, that's one of the reasons why most of the times when we allow every other thing or every other being describe us, we mess up our lives. Only a creator can describe us. Society cannot describe us. You know, the beautiful thing about it is that even your, our minds cannot describe us. Our bodies cannot describe us. It's a creator that describes us. And what's of all is when we allow peer pressure to describe us. As um, Dr. Miles Moore of the Blessed Memory said, he said, allowing peer pressure to describe you is like allowing a, a blind man who does not know where is the road, who does not know how to chart his course, to lead you who is a fellow blind man. So, if a blind man leads a blind man, where do they end up? Especially without a walking aid, where do they end up? They end up in a ditch. Now, that's just for peer pressure. And aside peer pressure, allowing any other being or any other thing, what? Describe us is not allowing a blind man lead us when we are blind. Are we together? The only one that has described is the creator. Are we together? And he has described as good. Any other description does not make sense. Are we together? Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. One of the definitions for agreeable given by the uh, Miramixa dictionary is being in harmony. Being in harmony. That is consonant. Being in harmony. So when God said it is good, it means it is in harmony with me. It is in consonant with me. See, these things are, we need to understand this. That's why when, when, God, when God created, he knew what he created. He knew what he created. And he would have, okay, God would have just ended. We waited for Genesis chapter 1 verse 31 and he says, okay, everything is good. Are you getting what I'm saying? But it was not a waste of time for him to get to verse 4 after he had created light and he said, it is good. He went to verse 10. He said, it is good. He went to verse 12. He said, it is good. Why did he keep saying, it is good, it is good, it is good, it is good? He did not go to verse 31. After he had summed, after he had finished creating, he now said, everything is what? Very good. Why? It makes us understand that God created in segments and in sections. Are we together? And each segment was harmonious with God. Are we together? And God had to segment creation before he what? Brought creation together. Why? Because every segment has its rule. Now, there's something called the individual purposes of God for man. Are you getting what I'm saying? And there's something called the corporate purpose of God for the creation. Are we together? Man has his individual purpose. And in fact, as individuals, we have an individual purpose. Are we together? But now, as a species called Adam, because the word man there is the Hebrew word Adam, which means um, humankind, the species called um, Adam, called man. Are you getting what I'm saying? As a species called Adam, we have a corporate purpose. Are we together? 
and the corporate purpose we know is to make earth like heaven. But now, aside the species called Adam, they had the fishes, which was the species of um, aquatic life. Are you get what I'm saying? We had the best species of what? Um, life that fly. Now, every of these, they had their what? Their individual purpose. And God, when God created every of these, he called them good so they can fulfill their individual purposes. And then when it comes to the end of everything, everything was good, fulfilling his purpose. Good, you uh, fulfill your purpose. You good, fulfill your purpose. You good, then he now sums it up. When all of them come together to fulfill their purpose, he now sums it that was very good. Now, so God understood how things operate. Now, in every organization, whether from the family unit to the um, um, corporate organization, to the church, wherever, every organization is broken into segments for effective running. Is that not so? Yes. Every organization is broken into departments for effective running. If you don't break it into departments and segments, it's going to be all clumsy and it can, the organization cannot what, fulfill purpose. Are you getting what I'm saying? Same way in a home. The marriage is run by purpose. Are you getting what I'm saying? The man has his purpose, the woman has her purpose, and then the children have their purpose. Everyone fulfills their purpose, the family is beautiful. But if one person refuses to fulfill his purpose, then it becomes cumbersome. In, in, this, in every organization, the same thing. Now, so when um, animal lives fulfill their purpose, um, plant life fulfill their purpose, without plants, we know that we cannot have um, photosynthesis. And oxygen is nowhere. Are you getting what I'm saying? Praise God. Every one of them fulfill their purpose. Then creation fulfills its corporate word, purpose. And everyone, God called their called them good, 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 good. And some because they were all working in harmony with his heart. They were all they were all individually, they were all harmonious. So when God, when God looked at a plant life, it was harmonious, animal life harmonious, and then corporately it was what? A corporate harmony. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. And then that's why I said. Very good. Amen to Jesus. And the devil was mad at this. Praise God forevermore. Now this makes us understand that all of creation was in harmony with God during and after he created. And they were totally free from any element of what? Discord. Creation was totally free from any element of discord. When you read through Genesis chapter 1 to Genesis chapter 2, if you can open your eyes, if the Holy Spirit can open your eyes, you will see harmony. And God brought every animal, everything he created to Adam, to name. And whatsoever he named it, that was their name thereof. You could see harmony, harmony, harmony. If you go from the creation story from verse 3, you can see harmony in creation. Are you getting what I'm saying? That harmony was what the devil hated. And he sought to bring what? Discord. <laughs> Are we together? He sought to bring discord. Praise God forevermore. Now, what you need to understand, how do you know that purpose is at work? Harmony. Simple harmony. When it's going hitch free, sweatless, purpose is at work. How do you know that purpose is at work when the devil is trying to bring his God? Once you see that this God is trying to come up, just hold on to that thing that it, that this that area that this God is coming out from. That area is fulfilling purpose. Then press on that area in prayers. Press on it with the word to maintain its goodness, so that the devil will not bring what. Discord. That's that's these are just simple ways to know how it works. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Now, this harmony is seen in the absolute obedience of creation to the commands of God. You see, Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Absolute obedience. No sweat. No struggle. No. And God said, Let there be light. And light said, Ah, God, is it that you want me to appear? Or, okay, sh wait, God, wait, let me do something first before I appear. Okay, God, um, okay, why don't I appear tomorrow? Are you getting what I'm saying? In fact, I like a translation that puts that he said, and God said, light be, and light was. You know, it makes us see the instance in what? In the obedience to the command. Are you getting what I'm saying? The obedience of creation to the commands of God make us see the harmony between everything that was created and God. So, what everything got from lights to the animals to the plants, they were all in harmony with God before God spoke them to be. So they were, they were, they were, they were in, 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 it was a, a unity, it was a oneness. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, what's the proof of oneness? It's, it's sweatless obedience. 
Toilet obedience. If you have to struggle to obey, that means you are not one with the person. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 9, it says, If you are willing and what? Obedient. Yes. You eat the good of the land. Now, so if you are not willing, the likelihood is that you will not be obedient. Are we together? Yes. If you are not willing, you not. And the reason why many Christians are not obedient is because they are not willing. Why, why are they not willing? Because they are not in harmony with God. They are not in harmony with God. Are you getting what I'm saying? They are not in harmony with God. When you are in harmony with God, you are willing. Are you getting me? The proof of what being uh, of, 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 of being um, in harmony with God that you are just your will is his will is now your will. So there's no struggle. Are you getting what I'm saying? And then you don't also struggle to obey God. Obedience is a struggle when you are not yet willing. And you are not willing because you are not in harmony with God. So creation was willing to obey God because creation was in harmony with God. Already in harmony. So when God said, light beep, light just flow, no. Uh, animals, comfort, they just came for that. No sweat, no struggle. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Amen to Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah to Jesus. This is why God said it is good. It is good. This one is good. But it is agreeable with me. It is in harmony with me. Light. Be. Light. Be. Say light. You are good. I get what I'm saying. Now if God has spoken anything and it did not come, then God would have said this one is not good. But you know we bless the name of the Lord. We bless Adonai. For what? Everything he spoke came. Yes. That means everything he spoke was in harmony. And I tell you child of God. You are Actually, a product of the spoken word of God also. Are we together? So it means that you are in harmony with God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Our lives are in harmony with God. We, need to, we just need to understand this. Are, are, are we together? Yes. And that, you see, when this is understood, you discover that obeying God becomes sweatless. Obeying God becomes sweatless. I remember one of the times I, 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 I there was something that happened and it, it, it pained my heart and I asked the Lord, Lord, ah, but I told you about this. The Lord said, Ah, no, but I asked the Lord, ah, what happened now? Why did this thing happen? He said, ah, it is because it was your own will. I said, Lord, you mean it was that It was not my will. He said, yes, it was your will. I said, how? He said, it was your will. I said, but Lord, I told you about it. He said, yes, I agree, you told me. But you know way to hear me concerning it. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? That's what harmony is all about. Prayer is not monologue. It is what? Dialogue. When I tell you, Lord, then yeah, you tell me back. He said, you told me. I agree, you told me. But you know way to hear me about it. And you ran with your will. I said, hey, Lord, I'm sorry. That day I laid down on the floor and I began to cry. I said, Lord, I dropped my will for your choice. You know, sometimes God is just going to watch us and allow us. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because he wants to teach us the principle of harmony. Creation understood harmony. The fall of man made man become distorted in harmony. Thank God for the new creation. Who by his spirit understands what? Harmony. That's why we live by the Spirit. The Bible says if we live in the Spirit, let us therefore what? Walk in the Spirit as new creatures. We don't live by our flesh. We don't live by our senses. Because only our spirit man is in harmony with what? The, with the Lord. And that's why your spirit has to lead it, lead it all. And you have to be sensitive to, the, to, to your spirit who is what? He is already, already in harmony with the Holy Spirit. When you get born again, your spirit man becomes one with the Holy Spirit. So you have mind. Your mind has to be in harmony with your spirit. Anytime our minds are not in harmony with our spirit, we always enter into problems. Yes. Enter into problems. Because our body only what manifests what our mind has decided. So if we make decisions without the harmony of the spirit, what happens? Our bodies will what? Carry out an idea that is not in the will of the Father. So creation understood this before the fall. Are you getting what I'm saying? And creation was in absolute harmony with God. It's not this time that God will say something, oh, especially them that live in the mind, Christians, the Lord help us. Everybody has, a, we now hear God for ourselves. We now have our own interpretation of God for ourselves. People have even re-described Jesus and re-described Elohim. We, have re we just don't know what we want to do. And sometimes we wonder. And somebody was saying, was saying I don't know, is it the same Bible we're not reading? I, I, I was... I was in a journey and I was, um, they were, they, there's a book that was written, this book was written on all the different religions. Are you getting what I'm saying? They said, they talked about this religion, they explained them, are you getting me? They talked about this religion, they explained them. And when they got to Christian, they said, the only religion that you can understand, but very difficult to communicate. And I was like, oh, fine. 
That's what you guys have to say. Are you getting what I'm saying? And when you go online, you see people say, this is the most confusing religion now. In fact, this religion too. But you see, the reason why it's becoming like this is because we don't understand what creation understood. The harmony of creation with the Father is what the saints are refusing to understand. Because I tell you, when you understand this harmony, nobody needs to preach. The Bible says, God told them, he said, I have removed the, the laws and I placed them in your heart. And he said, no man will tell his brother again to not do this or to not do that. He says, but because what I put the laws in your heart. That's why the Bible says, as men that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of who? Of God. When the Spirit of God leads you, my brother, you'll be in harmony with God. And we will know. We will know. The good will manifest. Are you get what I'm saying? If the good is not manifesting, we know already that you are not being led by the Spirit. See, you are using your brain, you are using your mind to reconstruct scriptures. And anybody can do it. <laughs> Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah, Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. And so this harmony, this harmony in creation, God saw it and he spoke it. He saw the harmony. You see, God doesn't, God doesn't speak what he has not seen. Are you getting me? He saw the harmony. He knew the harmony. And then he did what? He spoke it because it had happened. Light be, light be. And so God said, you are good. You are good, man. You are good, you are good, you are good. Okay. Uh, animals come. When animals came, but God said, you are good, you are good, good. You see, that's why we have a loving father. He's not somebody who will not tell us we are good. Are you getting what I'm saying? He compliments, he describes us well. When he saw they were behaving harmoniously, he didn't remove his face. He instantly told them, you are what? Good. Are we together? Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Every command, every time God said, let there be, and there was, and let this do, and it did. How many was at work? Are we together? Now, if you read through Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, 6, 9, 11, 14, 15, 20, you see, you see how many at work, you know? And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Are you getting me? Instant obedience. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the heaven, and let it divide the waters from the water. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. You see that? It was so. And then, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the hair yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind. We see this himself upon the earth. And it was so. And God said, let there be light in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for season and for days and for years. And let them be for lights in the firmaments of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. You see, it was so. It was so. And then he says, And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that had life and fowl that may fly above the earth in upon the firmament. Everything was so. Was so. You know what I'm saying? Harmony. 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 Sweet, sweatless obedience. When sweet, sweatless obedience is at work, good is at work. Mm. Mm. And you get what I'm saying? Yes. We are speaking for goodness, Abby. So, see, we are speaking for obedience into this year. Huh? So, child of God, they say, well, let's speak for, you know, when we, when we see scriptures, we like it very well when it's, um, when it's sweet to us. Are you get what I'm saying? We are saying, let's speak for goodness. We want to speak for goodness. When you are saying speak for goodness, you are speaking for harmony. That means your spirit is already in harmony with what? The Holy Spirit. Now, your, your soul, our souls have to be in harmony with our spirit this year. I get what I'm saying. That means we are speaking for sweatless obedience. So when God begins to tell us to do some weird things, and God told Abraham, leave your father's, leave your father's house, and I will take you to the land, and I will show you. The Bible says, Abraham, look for a city whose maker and builder was God. Ah, eh, at 75, what am I taking another journey in my life again? God, if you say so, we go. And over there, Abraham obeyed God. Abraham obeyed God. If you say so, I go. Harmony, harmony. No argument. Are you get what I'm saying? Yes. So when we are speaking for goodness, we are speaking for obedience this year. Lord, we are obeying you. Man. Sweatlessly, Lord, we are obeying you. Man. Whether it's sweet or it's not sweet, we are obeying you. Man. Are you get what I'm saying? <laughs> I remember the first, um, the first when I wrote my first book um, um, in 2006. When I wrote the first book and I did a book launch, I that was the first time. That was the first time I did um, fundraising. I never knew I had the grace for fundraising. After that, I came to it again. <laughs> I raised the money. I didn't know I raised it. Wow! And at the end of the day, I had to pay back the loans I took. And the person who promised um, to pay the biggest amount of money, he finally gave me the money. And as he gave me the money, I said, okay, yes, let me start paying my loan back. You know what? 
I had the Lord tell me, oh, I had the Lord tell me, give me this money. That was 2006. That money was 50,000 naira. He said, give me this money. Hey, I said, what? I knew I had the Lord. I said, this money, where there are many debts to pay. Hey, the Lord said, give me this money. I said, hey, what do I do? Then I started crying because I knew that I must obey. I was singing, Lord, I'm giving my best to you. And I was crying. I was crying. I was crying. And then what happened? I was just in my final year in university. I took this money and I divided it into three. Gave 20, um, so 20,000 in the man of God, so the other 20,000 in another man of God. And then the final 10,000, I gave it to the, when I went for NYC, the church that I, I, I was um, serving with. So um, I was helping a church. Yeah, they were family friends to us, but they were like parents to me. They are passed on to the glory of God. You know, I was helping their church. I was helping their youth everywhere, music and everywhere I could help. I gave, when we were doing um, raising of funds for equipment, I gave the 10,000. You know, I remember the first, the man of God I felt, felt gave me, I looked at me and said, Chint, see this thing you are doing is painful, have you? Say, it's painful, it's okay. But this is a seed. When you sow seed, you know that it goes down into the ground. But it comes back in a bigger form. I looked at me and I said, God, we honor him. Second man of God, I gave the seed to, I gave him and I left. I thought the wife came out to me and said, ah, you don't give such kind of seed and run away. No, you don't give such kind of seed and run away. He became a serious, you know, cover. And these men of God, two of them, were very important in my life at that phase of my life. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. And 50,000 naira was given, I said, I was owing a debt of 200,000 naira. 50,000 naira would have paid one percentage, one fourth. How would I get the many 200,000 naira? Only God would have helped me. And one day, I was on my own. And the person who gave me the loan of 200,000 naira, the person came and met me. And the person told me, the Lord told me to tell you that I have forgiven you of that debt. Hallelujah. I said, what? He said, I have forgiven you of the debt. That's all. That is all. So God used, um, what gave me, check me, uh, be He used 50,000 naira yeah. to clear 200,000 naira. But the answer is that the harvest of that 50,000 naira, I'm still getting it today. Are you getting yes, what I'm saying? Yes, yes. Obedience is never easy. Are you getting what I'm saying? To be in consonance with God, it's never easy. So for God to say it is good is because creation obeyed him sweatlessly. 2024, God is going to be giving us instructions, commands. They may be weird. Some will be weird. Some will be whacked. Some will be mind-blowing. Some will be crazy. And you get what I'm saying? But you see, it's not a year to argue with God. It's a year to obey God. I get what I'm saying. If life has said God, okay, let's wait for another one day. Now, God, see, see, look at the way the earth is now. Let's wait for another one day, God. Or the earth, see, God, the earth is not ready. The earth is not even ready for me yet. No, 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 no. I was talking to somebody. I said, when the Lord tells us to go to a mission field, we move. We move. Somebody was asking, do you know anybody in Ghana before you came? I said, the person I knew was useless to me. I literally knew nobody. And I, I always said, when God tells us to move, we move. You know where I go to? Yes, we don't know. But we move, we just hear the word, we go. That's all. What kind of people are you? We don't know the kind of people we are. We are just people that are in harmony with God. <laughs> in consonance with God. We are moving. I get what I'm saying. We are moving. The absolute obedience of creation to God was and is because God is the source and sustainer of all things. And in Him, all things what? Consist. Thus, creation is dependent on God. And without Him, there can be no creation. See, the reason why creation obeyed, are you get what I'm saying? The harmony of creation with God, because creation itself, people knew that God was the source and sustainer. Mm. And God is his source. See, why do we obey God? We obey God because we know God is our source and is our sustainer. In Him we live and move and have our being. Yeah. Ah, that's why we obey God. We don't obey God because it's convenient for us. We don't obey God because we even like to obey God. But we obey God because without Him we cannot exist. Yes. Oh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 16 to 17. He says, And he is before all things, talking about Christ Jesus. And by him all things consist. Say, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. 
whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Hallelujah. So see, creation had to obey because creation knew that water. They were cre- it was created because of him. You get know what I'm saying? Yes. Revelations 4 verse 11 again. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory on our power, for thou art created all things, and for thy pleasure the earth that were created. Now, we obey because we know that we, we, uh, we, call, he, we, we exist by him. Because of him we exist. He's the, one, he's the reason for our existence. He's our source and our sustainer. Like somebody once said, he said, when you give your child biscuits, and you tell the child, give me, and the child does like this, the child does not have sense. When the child takes the biscuit back to his hand, the child does not have sense. That child needs sense. So what you to do is to start praying sense into the child and start teaching sense into the child. Because the child does not... I give my children stuff. My children um, um, snacks. And I tell them, please give me. And they freely give me. So they even give me the full pack. And you get what I'm saying? They freely give me what? Because that didn't give it to me. And that is asking from me. Uh, that means if he collects some, he will give me another one. That's what that's what creation understood. That's what is called faith. If you cannot obey God, it means you don't have faith in the God you are claiming to know. And it means also that you don't know where you came from. <laughs> Obedience is a proof that I know that God is my source and my sustainer. Hey! So when I obey him, I'm just... I'm just validating his, 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 play, his role in my life that he created me. He is my source and my sustainer. So every time we obey God, God says good. Why? Yeah, I have validated that he's my source and my sustainer. And let me tell you, whether you validate it or not, you cannot change the truth. That's why God did not say it is nature, uh, creation is bad. Now, because it, see, even where Adam sinned, he could not change the truth that God still remains what? His source. So God did not say it's bad. Now, God did not ungood the good. Because he still remains what? The source. So everywhere we disobey God, God still remains our source. What he lost the opportunity to do what? To enjoy our source. Mm. What he lost the opportunity. Yes. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when you tell, you see, when you tell Christians give, they feel that they are going to they are going to pay God or they are going to uh, what else again? We have different definitions. Are you getting what I'm saying? Apostle Paul says, um, he says, all things are yours. All things. So whether death, whether life, whether even me, Paul. And even Apollos, we are all what? They are, we are all yours. He said, if you have received what you have, why then, why do you now behave as though you have not received? Are you getting what I'm saying? And, and so it's amazing when Christians live in disobedience. It's amazing. Why? When God looks at us and we live in disobedience, he begins to wonder, these people need sense. They need sense. They need sense. They need sense. They need to, they need to chop sense. They need sense. And it says, in the baptism of sense. And one of the things that <laughs> Christians need that is the baptism of sense. Oh, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And they say, since after COVID, we will not be able to dwell together in unity. Why? We need sense. We need sense. We need sense. Say, I'm online. I'm watching online. I am following online. You need sense. You need sense. You need sense. Are you sharpening iron? So the countenance of a brother sharpening that of another. You need sense. You are not going to sharpen your brother. You need sense. You know why we sharpen ourselves now? On Facebook, with different arguments. Mm. Why now we sharpen ourselves? We are blunting ourselves. Killing ourselves. Cutting and cutting. The night that we sharpen, we come out to cut ourselves. Whereas we're supposed to sharpen that night and go and cut the devil outside. We are cutting ourselves. We need sense. You see, we have been able to front scriptures left, front obedience to scriptures left, right and center because Christians need basic sense now. Basic sense. Common sense. Scriptural common sense. If you call me an old, old time preacher, I'm fine with it. Please, I better, my sense better remain intact as an old generation than to lose sense and become this stupid new generation. Mm, this kind of new generation, I don't want it. I don't want it. My parents don't flow with me now. Eh? Because I'm not a new generation. I am a child of God. <laughs> I'm a child of God. Creation has sense. Where did we lose sense? <laughs> creation or creation has sense. Where did we lose sense? Creation obeyed God. Creation aligned with God. Where did we lose sense? Where did we lose sense? And God said, this one is good because this one is, is in harmony with me. It's in harmony with me. Just obey me, no stress. Life did not argue. Life did not argue. Bible was asking, can he, can he, can, uh, God, told, God took Jeremiah the prophet and said, okay, go, go, go to the potter's house. Mm. You see, we don't like preaching that part of scripture very well again. Go to the potter's house. 
and he saw the way the potter was was smashing and remaking. You see, and the potter was about taking the clay to a very and, and, and he had molded a very beautiful vessel. And the clay was feeling that man, I'm all good now. I'm good to fly. God has finished with me. See, we are talking from experience. Sir. Why do you think that God has finished with you? And then God just squashes you to ground zero. But God, I thought you had made me. Lord, I thought you had finished training me. I was talking to um a pastor and I told her, I said, you see, when I went to Congo, I thought God had finished training me. Hey, when I came back, a man of God, a senior man of God said, ah, that training you went through in Congo, no Bible school would have been able to train you like that. People were telling me, a lot of my pastor told me the same thing. So I felt God has finished training me. Oh yeah, God said, enter Ghana. I enter Ghana. I thought I was, I've come to explode the whole Ghana. Only for me to say one year, two years, I said that under training, I'll start again. Five years under training, I say, God, what is all this? I thought you had finished training me. When you think that he has molded you, and you are all beautiful, you say, I'm good to fly. And then he just squashes you to ground zero again, and starts molding you again. Can you still be obedient? When it looks like God is all messing you up. When it looks like God is taking you back to, to zero. Lord, I thought I left this level of my life. And God takes you back to that level again. But God, this is backward. You know, when we are, when we are born again, we go forward and the path of his trust is like a shining light that shines more and more onto a perfect day. Lord, I'm to go forward. No backward. Backward never. For we will not start praying for God. <laughs> Don't pray to God, we'll pray for God. I pray for God. I feel that God is guessing it wrong somewhere. We need to pray for God. <laughs> Let's pray for the Lord. We need to pray for God. God, don't you know your word? And you know, some of us in that country are saying, Concerning my word, command ye me. Go and look at that verse of scripture. It was a question God was asking. Was that just a concerning word? Will you command me? Am I not the one who wrote the word? Can you command me about my word? And we don't, some of us will move the question mark. Don't know that when you're reading Bible, you have to use apostrophe, comma, question mark, all of them to get understanding. I said the word of the Lord said, command him concerning my word. Command him. I will start commanding God. Some of us are praying for God. Some of us are commanding God. And God is now putting down looking and saying, wait to. Is it me that created you? Or you created me? That's why I told Jeremiah, go, 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 let me show you something. Let me show you something. Please, oh, can they allow me to be their God? Can they allow me to make them? Can you allow me to be their creator? Some of us, God is not asking, God is not sending even prophet uh, third parties to us to the back. Will you allow me to be your creator? Because the way we have been going on this journey for the past 10 years, you've not even allowed me to create you in any way. Hey, you don't understand. Allow me now, allow me. Now God is the one pleading with us. And we're not the ones praying for God. And not the ones commanding God. Whereas in creation, God commanded things to be. We are the one commanding God now. And praying for God. We have lost harmony with God. And we want things to be good. It doesn't work like that. When we are talking about speak for goodness, we are speaking for obedience. God, sweat less obedience. Ah, I will be that clay in your hand. Though. Any I want to do, if you, if, so long as it's you molding me, I'm fine. See, and one of the things that the devil has done also is to bring this God by making us always think that it is him at work in our lives. So whenever we see things that we don't like, it's not favorable to us flesh, what do we do? We think the devil has just come to the picture. So imagine that clay, when the potter, the, when he thought that he was already, already becoming a beautiful vessel, he looked at himself and said, I'm all good. And the potter squashed him and I said, this is the devil. The devil has squashed me. The devil has squashed me. The devil has squashed me. Whereas it is the potter that is still working. See, you cannot be in the hand of God and at the same time in the hand of the devil, child of God. Yes. You cannot be in the hand of God and the same time you have to choose one. If I'm in the hand of God, the devil cannot handle me. Ah. Yes, yes. So if God is squashing me to the ground zero, I get what I'm saying. It is the Lord that is squashing me, it's not the devil. Yes. If he's telling me to go back to, to my to, 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 to my ancient landmark, it is the one telling me. If he's telling me to go back to my first office, it's the one telling me. If he's telling me to go to zero level again so he can start me afresh. He's the one. The devil cannot handle me when God is the one holding me. Child of God, wake up to that. Uh, wake up, wake up to it, wake up to it, wake up to it. Wake up to it. That's why we help your obedience. All this one that any small thing we have to let's see witches, wizards, devil, uh, demons. And that's how Christians think. We have been so satanic, satan conscious and become God unconscious. So we believe that God is the one holding the clay. He's the one uh, sorry, the devil is the one holding us. And squashing us, then you now let the kingdom of darkness translate to the kingdom of light, just for the devil to now hold you. Ha! Huh. There's problems on here. Even creation did not think like this. How come the Greeks are thinking like this? 
That's why we need sense. God has to overhaul our mind. Are you get what I'm saying? This message is for mental overhauling, renewal, so that we go back to God and say, God, I have come to you. Creation was obedient. I will be obedient. By force, I will be obedient. He said to you, brethren, that by the mercy of God, I present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God. Use your reasonable service. Be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the world. Renewing of your mind. That he may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Somebody was talking, and somebody was telling me, and somebody was asking, he, he are asking God questions. Asking God, and somebody was saying, why would he be asking God? Why would I ask God questions? I need to be sure that I am in obedience. I ask so that I'll be sure that I'm in what? Obedience. I want to be outside obedience. And then think that, eh, hey, things that are going off. I know I have to be sure that I'm in obedience to God. So that if he's the one that's squashing me, I get what I'm saying. If he's the one that squash me, so long as I'm in his hand, I'm safe. I'm safe in his hand. I'm safe. I love his squash in his hand than be made in the hand of the devil. Yes. And many Christians, this reason for this stupid book, all these stupid comparisons, the Bible, the Bible says, comparing themselves, they be not wise. All these stupid things we are seeing in church today, all these stupid competition we are seeing amongst saints, the reason for it is that we rather prefer to be made in the hand of the devil than to be squashed in the hand of God. I rather prefer to be squashed in the hand of God than to be made in the hand of the devil. Gosh, Lord have mercy. Yes. Lord have mercy. I have so much to say, but time is already fast spent. And I think we just have to stop here so that we can continue in our next meeting. Child of God, everything that God created, we are agreeable to Him. They were in harmony with Him. This year, 2024, is a year to be in harmony with God. Yes. Lord, I will obey you. Uh, they, they, they see, some of us say, yes, Job did, did not have good understanding. In the Old Testament, they never had good understanding of God. Whether good or bad, they saw it as God. Are you getting what I'm saying? But I think that they understand is here, they small. Well, at least I understand it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Because the fact that we don't know that the devil is the one behind every battle, even when God is at work, we are to the devil. Job said, though he slayeth me, yet will I what? Trust him. God will not slay us. Yes. Are you getting what I'm saying? It was the devil that was behind everything that was happening to Job. Are you getting what I'm saying? Fine. But Job still said, even if it's God that is doing this to me, I will still trust my God. But look at us in the church today. God said, he's pampering us. And we already say, Satan, I bind you. Get out of my life. Some of us are still binding God, thinking that he's the devil. I prefer to be squashed in the hand of God than to be made in the hand of the devil. Yes. I prefer to obey God and be in pains, as it were, than to what? Than to flow with the devil. I enjoy my life as something. Creation was in what? Harmony with God. Child of God. We are speaking for goodness. That means we are speaking our lives into harmony with God. Let our life become in harmony with God. Lord, we obey. As you say it, we obey it. We will not argue with you. Once we hear you, we obey. Once we know it is you, we obey. No procrastination. No argument. Lord, our lives we be in harmony with you in 2024. You can turn that to a prayer wherever you are. Now is your moment of salvation. If you are yet to make the Lord Jesus Christ, your Lord and personal Savior, we request that you say this prayer along with many others now. Say this words, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner, I repent of my sins, and ask that you forgive my sins. I believe that you shed your blood on the cross, died for my sins, and rose again in the third day. Today, I invite you into my life today. Wash me by your blood, make me your own, and till eternity be my Lord and personal Savior, thank you Lord Jesus, in Jesus' precious name. For your love gift of any amount to Grace Life Kami Podcast, kindly use any of our giving channels available, to give in dollars. You can send to Universal Merchant Bank Ghana. Account number, 033-154-551-2013. Swift code, M, B, G, H, G, H, A, C, to give in CDs. Universal Merchant Bank Ghana. You can send to account number. 033-254-551-2017. To give in Naira, you can send to Ecobank Nigeria. Account number 554 Also, for further inquiries.
you can call us on plus two three three five four five nine four seven one three two o r send us an email via chimdi ohahuna ministry at gmail.com today remain ever blessed we believe you were blessed listening to this teaching from god's word may your soul remain ever refreshed and revived we would love to hear your praise report today beloved remain connected to grace life Komi podcast jesus is lord